Well, hello there. How you doing? This is Pastor Arthur Duran from the Kingdom Embassy Covenant Church, 3025 Glenside Boulevard, Muskegon, Michigan, 49441. And I'm excited about uh, doing your devotional this uh, noonday uh, on our resurrection uh, Friday, which we call Good Friday which is Holy Friday. Uh, so uh, this is probably the first time I remember in my lifetime where there was not a service going on in the church. Uh, but God is good anyhow, as, as my mom would say, anyhow, right? But um, so thank you all so much for joining in with us today. And so I want to share with you all uh, the blessing from the Lord. Tracy, so, so glad you uh, joined in. Um, I'm really going to be talking about the power of the seed or the power that's in you uh, when we talk about uh, Christ dying on the cross. Um, so I want to share a uh, devotion with you all that I think can be very impactful. All right. Um, so uh, share it uh, with a friend, invite someone over, uh, tell them to tune in, send them a text message, um, tell them they don't want to miss this one. It's extremely, extremely good, and I think it's going to be a blessing. Let's bow our heads. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much. Uh, it's because of what happened on Calvary that we're able to do what we're able to do today. Let's share your good news of the kingdom of God. And we appreciate that so much, and we love you so much. We thank you for all those people across the world who's honoring you, praising and magnifying your name, showing your love from heart to heart and breast to breast to every single person they come in contact with, uh, making you smile. Uh, uh, we just appreciate that. Uh, Lord, we thank you for your Holy Spirit. It's your Holy Spirit that leads and guides us in the direction in which you want us to go. It teaches us the Word of God, gives us the understanding of the Word of God, uh, helps us really love like um, we don't have the ability to love uh, it's just so supernatural, and we thank you for that. I thank you for creating us in your image and your likeness, giving us uh, your DNA. And more than anything else, I want to thank you for your uniqueness, how you created every one of us before we was in our mother's womb, so you know everything about us, all our shortcomings, all our misfortunes, uh, everything about us, all the mistakes we made, all the mistakes we're making, uh, you know them, and yet uh, you still love us. And we say thank you. And I say on behalf of all of your children, we love you, we praise you, and magnify you, and give you glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So uh, today, um, I want to use talk to you from a couple of different scriptures, but I want to talk to you about the power of a seed, uh, the power of a seed, the uniqueness uh, of a seed. Now, Jesus Christ and his death uh, was very, very instrumental in God reconnecting us back to him. And his entire time he was with his disciples, he was telling them about uh, how they should behave in the earth, how they should carry on in the earth. Um, he was training them how to be powerful disciples, uh, followers of Christ. He wanted them to be uh, just like him and teach people how to love unconditionally, uh, despite uh, what other people were saying about people and how um, raggedy people's lives were. Uh, we ought to come alongside them and love them through the process and do everything that we could within our power to resurrect them. All right? um, and he knew that was going to be very, very challenging. And God knew that was going to be very challenging. So God had to put a plan in place uh, in order for that to happen. Um, and, and so and the, the beauty of it is that it's in the is in the picture of a seed. Uh, I didn't understand it until I was doing some reading, and and it's, I was like, it just came out, it just it just lifted up off the pages um, into my heart um, when I understood the uniqueness of a seed. Now I've taught on it before, uh, so I knew it was there. Uh, God just brought it back to me. Um, so and here's what um, I thought about when I taught this years ago, and let's talk about Calvary. All right. Uh, the seed uh, is powerless as long as it's in your hand. 
The power of a seed is when it's dropped and when it hit the soil. That's the power of the seed, right? That's the real true power of the seed. And so we're going to talk about that. And I want you to think, put a pin in that and hold it and think about that and think about your life. So let me read a couple of scriptures to you. So in John chapter three, verse three, Jesus says this, Jesus answered and said unto them, verily, verily, I say unto you, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. So he's having a conversation with Nicodemus, who's one of the Pharisees, one of the um, Jewish scholars who knew the word of God uh, and knew the Torah, knew the law, uh, like the inside of his hand. I mean, he just knew it. So, but he could not understand the power that Christ possessed. He couldn't understand how he was able to do the things he was doing. Um, and so um, he knew that something was special about Jesus. He knew that he was a, a teacher of God. Uh, and he knew no man could do the miracles that he was doing, except the God that he knew was working through him. But some kind of way there, man, is like, mm, I don't know if he really who they say he is. But so he decided to have a, 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 a backyard or a late night conversation with Jesus. And Jesus tells him this. Said so Nicodemus, in order for you to truly understand this, you have to be born again. You have to be born again, right? So what he's telling Nicodemus is, uh, in order for you to really understand this, you have to die in order to understand this. There's no way you can understand what I'm teaching you unless you die. And then after you die, you have to be resurrected as a new creature in order for you to understand this. He says, so you have to die. And that didn't make sense to Nicodemus. So Nicodemus said, do I mean I have to go back into my mother's womb and then come back out and be born again? And Jesus, no, you have to be born of the water and of the spirit, all right? So he, he had this conversation and he tells him, man, that you have to be born again. Now I want you to remember that. So highlight it is John three and three. In Corinthians chapter two, I mean, 2 Corinthians chapter nine and verse six, Paul is having a conversation. Here's what Paul says. But this I say, he was so sparingly shall reap also sparingly, and he was soweth bountifully, shall reap also bountifully, right? Now, so a lot of people take that scripture and and uh, and it's used in various ways and all that. Um, but here's what I want you to think about when you go into the depths of it. And when you sow something, you have to put it into something. So he says, is when when your seed is buried then it grows, all right? Anything you bury, man, you intend to kill it. So in order for it to really take life, man, you have to really sow it into something so it has to die. Once you, it dies and you realize it's not yours anymore and you sow it, then it really starts to grow, right? So the life does not come to it until it's dead. Once it's dead and you sow it, and then you reap and you reap abundantly. Now think about it, now go back to the seed. When you take an apple seed and you plant it in the ground, the apple seed is only a seed until it sows into the soil. But actually, man, inside that apple seed is really an orchard, right? But you would never get to orchard until you plant the seed. You would never get to orchard until you plant the seed. Go back to Nicodemus. Nicodemus, in order for you to really understand the kingdom and be impactful, man, you have to die to you. Because your thinking and who you are and what's going on, you have to die to your whole train of thought, the way you've been doing things, because this is a different way. So in order for you to really be impactful the way you really desire in your heart to be impactful, you want to be able to do the things that I'm doing and, and be really the man that I am. But in order for you to do that, you have to die to you. There's no way that you can be able to do the things that I'm doing and understand the things that, that, I, that I'm doing and explaining, except you die to you and die to the thought process and everything they've been teaching you and telling you and all that. You have to die to you. Galatians chapter six, verse seven through nine. Be not deceived, God is not mocked. 
whatsoever man soweth, that shall he also reap. For he that soweth to the flesh, shall of the flesh reap corruption. But he that soweth to the spirit, shall of the spirit reap life everlasting. You cannot expect to be impactful in life if you want to hold on to who you are. You have to die to who you are in order to be everything God wants you to be, right? If you sow to this flesh and you, and it's all about your, me, myself, and I, and what I get out of it, you have to die to your whole train of thought. You have to die to you, and you got to be born again as a new creature, man, with God really, truly being the Lord of your life, right? Matthew 26, 36 uh, through 39. Then come Jesus with them unto a place called Gethsemane and said unto them, unto the disciples, sit ye here while I go and pray yonder. And he took with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee and began to be sorrowful and very heavy. Then he said unto them, my soul is exceedingly sorrowful, even unto death. Tarry ye here and watch with me. And he went a little further and fell on his face. And he prayed, saying, O oh, my father, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as thou will. So now we take a glimpse, we in a sneak preview of what was going on, man, before Christ was ready to die. He knew that his days were coming to an end. He knew that God plan was gonna come in full effect after the seed was planted into the ground. And he knew that. Now his flesh wanted to keep going, but he knew in order for the plan to really manifest itself like it had to, that the man, the son of man had to die. The son of man had to die, all right, in order, because that's God's principle. He had to die so the plan could be in full effect, all right, because he knew that the reconnection back uh, to God, the, the, uh, the, the power that we needed in order to do the things we had to do could not happen uh, except he died, all right, and he conquered death. So he did that. So, and so I want you to understand the power of, of the sin, uh, uh, I mean, the power of the seed. So we are uh, God's seed. And we have to understand, man, God want us 100%. But he can't get us, man, except we are born again. So he gave us Christ as an example for us, letting us know, man, if he had to die, so do we. All right? So he had to die, let man know that we have to die so we can be resurrected with a, a whole new mindset. That's why resurrection is so important, right? It's so important because you have to die to your, everything about you. It's not about me anymore. Here's a good story of, of a story of Abraham and his son, Isaac. When Abraham, God told Abraham to sacrifice his son, Abraham took his son to sacrifice him. He went up the mountain one way, but when, when Abraham came down, he was a whole new creature, right? He had died to him. And then he said, God, not my will, but yo, I'm willing to die to me and everything I want, everything I love. You gave me the son, I want him so bad, but I, I got to die to me and come alive to be everything you want me. And so when he came down from the mountain, he came down as a whole new creature. Once we are born again and we die to ourselves, and then we give our life over to God and we start working for God, the devil in hell don't have a chance. He only have power as long as we try to hold on to our sin nature and allow our sin nature, man, to, to manifest things in our life or, or, or try to satisfy the things in our life. So he wants us to die. A seed is one of the most mysterious things in God's creation. Right? It's very mysterious because uh, when you hold a grain of wheat in your hand, and I don't care how tight you hold it, that grain 
It's just a grain of wheat. But if you sow that wheat in the ground, all right, then all of a sudden, man, you got a crop for generations to come. All right. And so once we die to us and come alive to God, man, does the kingdom ever take off. If you want to see a person that's impactful for God, watch a person, man, who's in the world doing everything crazy in the world. And when they turn their life over to Christ and they die to that old life and they come into the new life, man, they're a whole different person. Now they deal with you different. I tell people all the time. We talk to people sometimes in the church, man, like they're crazy. We think we can say all kind of crazy things to people. All right. What they don't realize is that those people, man, in their prior life were killers. All right. They were thugs. Uh, they were robbers. Uh, they would fight you at the drop of a hat. All right. But when they got born again and they changed, man, they changed. And now they have the power of God working in their life. And they just won't do what they do. Now, God fights their battles. You don't want to resurrect that, right? So what you have is a gift from God to you, and we treat it like it's crap. Because we allow Satan to get in us and work through us, man, because we have not given our life to Christ. And we have not died to self. So now we always angry. Every little thing upsets us. Every little thing sets us off because it's, we have not died to us. Because it's all about us. It's all about what I want and what I can get and what's for me. It got to work my way. If it ain't my way, it ain't no way. All right? So we're so concerned. So we stab people in the back. We talk about people behind their back. We try to get their job from them. We try to steal their husband from them. We try to turn their kids against them. Uh, we try to turn the community against them because it's all about us. That's because we have not died to us. The key to resurrecting and being born again is die to you and then come alive to God and then realize that everything in the earth belongs to God. And now I see it that way. So now when I interact and I deal with things, watch the power of God. Everything you touch seems to prosper. It gets better and better and better. It grows and it gives life. And life just go on and on and on and on, right? And the thing is, you be you can be such a blessing even to your children. Uh, I think David said, "I never seen the righteous forsaken, nor even their seed begging bread." Uh, because you turn your life around, and you, because you turn your life around, and you gave your life to the Lord. Uh, some of the things man, your children is doing, they benefit him only because of what you done. Because you gave your life to the Lord, they have no idea. Uh, when they're talking smart to you, they're doing it. It's only because of the grace of God in your life that they are not dead today, all right? Because your prayers and your life that you've given over to God, all right? Some people don't realize the only reason their company is afloat is because of you, all right? That's important for us to understand that. And because we gave our life to the Lord and, and, and we no longer worry about us, but we worry about you. So now whatever we do, we're trying to make you better. We try to make your life better. Now we may make mistakes in the process and do a little bit too much for our children sometimes, all right? Uh, but that's a consequence for that decision, all right? But when we err on the right side, I always say try to err on the right side because when you sow that seed, which is you, watch what happens. When I have a gift and I sow that gift, into the earth. Man, the blessing is unbelievable. All right? So if, if you deposit it, all right, the gift that God has given you in life, all right, and, and you take that gift and then you dispense it, right? And and you sow it, man, you can see it flourish like like never before. And you put it in good soil. What do you mean by good soil? I'm sowing it, man, to help be beneficial, man, for the kingdom of God. Because some things, man, we can sow our, we can sow in bad soil. Like we know they're not right from the first time we have a conversation with them. So I don't want to be a part of that company, even though I can make a lot more money with that company. Right? They making me sell my soul to the devil for them. I know it's crooked or whatever. And I'm telling you, and the enemy would come and offer you so much, it's crazy. You know, I've been offered things 
uh, uh, that's astronomical amount of money to do things, right? To be a part of something and run something. And I'm like, absolutely not. I'm not going to do it, right? And so the spirit said, don't do it because then you're going to partner with something that is not going to pay dividends, right? And it's important. And, and then boy, did it ever turn out to be right, right? So when you sow you into the earth, what's, what you mean into the earth? When you sow and die to you and sow into the kingdom of God, and then and only then, man, can you flourish and be everything God intended for you to be. And, and that's and so that's understand. That's why Christ had to die. So he he died to show us that we can live again. All right. And because he died, we get Sunday. We get resurrection Sunday. And we get the power Sunday. And that's what and I know I don't want to get into whether Saturday, Sabbath is. I'm not talking about that. So understand the resurrection. When he resurrected, right? All right, all power was given to him in heaven and in earth. And here's the beauty. When he was resurrected, he also gave us power and reconnected us back to God. That's why believing in Christ and what Christ did is so important and so crucial. So now, so when he died, you die. So you have to die in order to live. I challenge you all today, man, to really give your life to the Lord. Quit being selfish, thinking that it's about you. I read something on the internet the other day that was very interesting. They said, man, all the limousines are parked now. I think the red bottom shoes are in the closet. The mink coats are hanging up in the closet. The four and five thousand dollar suits and six and seven, eight thousand dollar dresses is hanging in the closet because of this pandemic. None of it means anything. God has stripped us down to nothing. What we were when we got here. And we all are dependent on God to pull us through this situation. Let us know, man, it's not about the things we have because those things don't mean nothing. All that stuff means nothing. Only thing that matter is your relationship to Christ. And once we understand that, it gives us a peace that surpasses all understanding. Thank you all so much for listening today. I hope I said something that would be encouraging to you all. Uh, that lift your spirits. Um, so uh, please join us uh, Sunday at 11 o'clock uh, for our, our, our Easter service. Uh, so uh, we will come to you live at 11 o'clock for uh, a Sunday, for Easter Sunday. Again, thank you all again for sharing your gifts with Kingdom Embassy. A lot of you all have been really blessing us. We appreciate that. We will ask you to continue if, if you would. If God leads you to, if God doesn't lead you to do it, then don't do it. Uh, but we just thank you for what you're doing, for uh, all your tithes and offerings that you've been blessing us with, and we appreciate it so very much. Um, and thank you for uh, for listening to us um, uh, every day. We just try to be encouraging to you all. Uh, please share with someone else so they can also um, listen. Maybe we can say a word that encourages someone to lift them up, lift their spirits. All right. I do want to share on next Wednesday. I will not be going live on next Wednesday night. Um, I'm going to be doing my Bible study, uh, but I'm going to do a Zoom style. So I'm going to Zoom it. So if you would like to be a part of our Zoom uh, Bible study on Wednesday night, um, you might want to um, email me at Pastor Duren, P A S T O R D U R E N, at K E C C Muskegon, M U S K E G O N dot org. And, and uh, send me your email address. And then what I'll do is I'll send you uh, the ID password to join us for our Zoom Bible study. And if you can send me your email address, I'll email you a Bible study lesson as well. So you have something to go along with if you have a copy of it. Amen. So next week, Wednesday, we're going to be doing a Zoom Bible study. I'm going to be doing my regular noonday live, but Wednesday night, I'm going to be doing a Zoom Bible study. Let's bow our heads. Heavenly Father, thank you again for this day. Thank you for your blessing. And be with us, guide our hearts, guide our minds. Uh, let us uh, love each other, care for each other. Give us a heart and desire to call someone, let them know that we love them and we care for them, whether it's a text or an email message or uh, whatever. Um, but just let us reach out. Give us a heart and a passion to reach out and touch someone. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you. Have an awesome, awesome Friday.